Welcome to this edition of Traveling with a Share with Ken and Cheryl. She's Cheryl. He's Ken. And tonight we're live from our hotel room in the Intercontinental in uh, Miami. And we're getting ready to get on the MSC Meraviglia in, in the morning. And we always like to come down a day early. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, I want to get as much as I can out of my vacation, so I like to be the first one on the ship. So I always ask for an early time, and being here makes that much easier. Um, also, I don't have to worry about whether or not we're going to miss the boat, because Cheryl and I almost did once uh, in one of our very first cruises, and we decided since then that uh, we'll get here early. It's okay to be a day early. So uh, we're here. We uh, got up early, flew down this morning. But we're going to talk a little bit today about some of the things that we do to get ready for our trip. And I mean, some of it's obvious, and we may touch on packing, but there's some things that, that way before the cruise actually takes place that we start with. Um, one of those things is as we start to do our research, we'll decide what cruise we want, and we'll make the reservation. Now, I will say this, if you're working with a travel agent, some of this stuff is a lot easier. And, you know, since we're travel agents, we do it all ourselves. So um, it's not as easy. But we start by doing the research. We look at where's the ship going, what's in those ports, a lot of things. We'll talk about some of those tools that we use to, to do that. And I'll share a website that has a lot of information. Um, what else? Oh, so I said that what we're going to talk about mostly tonight is you, if you've already made your reservation and you kind of knew why you were going there, but maybe you haven't made all the details. These are some of the details you don't want to overlook uh, maybe a month or two or three out before your cruise, at least. Yeah. And, and uh, now I am probably a little over prepared usually because I love to do the research about the places we're going. Uh, in fact, I, I kind of make Cheryl nuts a little bit sometimes because I will be thinking about and talking about the cruise from the day we decide to book until we get off the ship. And then probably well, then I'll be doing videos about it. So I, I get I get months of pleasure out of a, a seven day cruise. Uh, this week's kind of, this is kind of an interesting situation because when we get off the Meraviglia, uh, we're going to move. I think it's just going to be one terminal down in the port of Miami, and we're going to get on the Celebrity Summit. So that adds a little bit of complications to the trip because we're getting off of one onto another. But it'll be cool to get to see uh, you know two different cruise lines in one week or in two weeks and doing two back to back at the same port saves airfare if you're a long way like we are a long way away from the port then you might as well get two for one <laughs> yeah well and we came down um you know it's just it was for us a lot easier even flying down to do two if we drive down we usually try to get a couple too we lose some things in between but one of the things that i'll do when i first start preparing yeah, it's almost dropped my mouth. Joy of live uh, live events, but I will start to look at and find out as much as I can about the ship. Again, I start like I said. I, I maybe I over prepare, but I love to know as much as I can. One of my favorite tools. I'm going to share this with you. I'll pop it up on the screen. Let's see. That should no. I didn't do it. Click that button. There we go. And, and this is this is a website called CruiseCritic.com. And there's probably more information about cruise lines, cruise ports, cruise home ports, uh, different facets of cruising, older people cruising, young people, disabled, I mean, newlyweds, uh, there's private islands. It's just all in here. This page right here that you see up is just a list of the cruise lines that they have information on. So for my Meraviglia, I went to the MSC board, and then I started reading the posts about the Meraviglia. The other thing that's really nice about Cruise Critic is you can post questions that you have. So I ask people, what's you know, what's the food like? You know, what can we expect? How's the storage in the cabins? I had a lot of questions, you know, that I wanted to get answers to. So I just posted them there, and and people will answer them. Uh, I also there were several people that were doing like live uh, blogs, or I wouldn't call them blogs, but they're doing a series of live posts about their adventures on board. You know, so I would follow along and read those. Uh, you know, looking at pictures they, they shared of the ship and the cabins, you know, those kinds of things so that I have a pretty good idea of, of what's going to happen. Um, we can take that down, I guess. Don't need it anymore. Anyway, and I'll put links in there. The probably links will probably get in until tomorrow morning, but 
Uh, for those of you that are watching on the replay, the links will be here. Uh, like I said, but that's where I start is I want to know as much as I can. The other source that I use is I go to Facebook. If you search on Facebook, uh, there's uh, several Meraviglia, uh, MSC Meraviglia forums. Some of them have 20 to 30,000 people that participate in them. So you can find, again, lots of information, get lots of questions that you might have asked. A good question that comes up a lot is how many formal nights? How formal is formal night? And it's interesting because I've been uh, thinking about this quite a bit. We brought a little dressier clothes than we might normally. Uh, not as much for the Meraviglia, but there is very definitely, even though we're only be on the summit five days, there's one formal night that is a little more, needs to be a little more formal. The Meraviglia is kind of low key. NCLs pretty much dress how you want to all the time. Carnival that was that way. They did have formal night on Royal Caribbean, but it was very much optional. Whereas on Canard, formal night is formal night. And there's only a few places you can go on the ship if you're not dressed up. So, you know, you, you want to find out, okay, how many? What am I going to have taken away of clothes? Um, and so that, that, I think that's about all I can I, I don't really look into the details as much as Ken does, but I do want to know the clothes I need to take. And I, and for me, like the wheelchair, how easy is it going to be to get in the room? I mean, there's, you know, there's certain specific things that interest me more, but um, I don't look into it. I, I, I like the surprise. I like to see what's this experience going to be like. He wants to know exactly what the whole ship looks like. I want to find out the first day and enjoy finding it and seeing it, enjoying all the artwork over the whole trip and having it all be new or as much of it as I can. And, and that is one thing that I'll add to our discussion tonight is the fact that um, when you're traveling with a wheelchair early on, uh, hopefully, like I said, if you're using a travel agent and they know that you, that you need a wheelchair or scooter, they'll typically make reservations for uh, an accessible room. Now, accessible rooms, depending on the cruise line, can vary from uh, ones that just some, have some handrails and a seat in the shower or maybe just rails in the shower to rooms big enough you can bring a scooter in and turn it in a circle inside the room. So you need to make sure, depending on what you're traveling with, because if you're traveling with a walker, you might be fine with just the, having the grab rails. Uh, with Cheryl's wheelchair, we want a door that we can get in, uh, room to, to get in the wheelchair before we go out. Just for those reasons, we make sure we get an accessible, a fully accessible cabin. But what typically comes with that for almost all of the cruise lines is there's a form that you have to fill out and get sent back. Now, uh, for my clients, what I'll do is I'll fill out as much of it as I can, and I'll send it to them because they'll typically have to sign it, and then I make sure that the cruise line gets it. And, and you want to make sure all of those things happen because if you don't get the form back in, what happens is, is they can take your accessible room away, which would be very inconvenient if you got on board. And I'll tell a story. we am going to tell the in-sale story. Okay. We, were, we were going to Bermuda, and we got an upgrade for our cabin. And we thought, well, that's pretty sweet. We got an upgrade. And then we went up there, and I thought, this this isn't that great. It was a balcony from an interior, but the room was probably half the size of the handicap room. Oh, actually, it was an, it was an outside, not a balcony, because they moved us to the balcony. That's the same. We went to a balcony. Yeah, so it was outside. Uh, yeah. Balcony, yeah, yeah. The room they put us in wasn't it wasn't accessible. There was nowhere to put the wheelchair collapsed in the room where it wasn't going to be a hazard if something happened. You know, so, uh, and this is one of those things that you can bear in mind too, is, is that in the event that you are uh, inadvertently put in a room that doesn't work for you, what you can do is go to the purser's or you know, the, the hotel manager's office and very politely, and but you can be persistent and just let them know that, you know, you had reserved a handicap room, they upgraded you out of a handicapped room. And you need it. You don't have any. There's nowhere to put the wheelchair because you can't leave them in the hall. There's nowhere to park them. So uh, the next day, what they did was they upgraded us to a, a balcony. And it wasn't an accessible balcony, but the cabin was big enough that we could, you know, we had a place to get the wheelchair out of the way. Now, when we moved into the cabin, and the reason this one wasn't for sale at that point in time was there was wet paint because they had been working on the cabin, painting it, but um, there, there were several places where there were signs, please don't touch wet paint, but we had, we had a good time and enjoyed it. Uh, you can keep that in mind too. If you ever really do have a big problem with a room that they have rooms they are usually working on. I mean, they're like giant hotels and something's always, you know, 
they always have their plans of you know renovating certain rooms so many at a time so that, that usually is something they can do for you by the way i, I see we got a couple of people watching let, let, put in the comments let us know where you're watching from um but so that's one of those things you want to make sure is that the paperwork gets done you know the i guess the next big piece of of the really early planning is figure out what you're going to do on the ship when you're in port. Now, there have been times that Cheryl and I would just stay on the ship in port. Now that we're, you know, we're doing more videos of ports, we you know, typically get off and go and do something when we can. But the where I always start is I start with looking at what the, they have on the ship for shore excursions. And so I'll go through and look all of them, and I'll try to see what's accessible. Because, again, if you're looking for an accessible shore excursion, they're not always going to have one from the cruise line. But I, I, that's where I start to look. And they fill up pretty quickly, too, if they do have one. Yeah. Um, so the the next place, you want to talk about where we go next to look? Well, the next thing I'd like to look at is TripAdvisor, because they do have excursions and tours for, you know, for each, well, everywhere in the world just about. And so I like to go through and I kind of compare what the, the the excursions they have or the tours they have. I compare those to the cruise ship tours. And a lot of times you can tell they're almost identical. But a lot of times they do have some more, they usually have more accessible ones, which is nice if you can't get one from the cruise ship. And, um, and they also have contact, how to contact them. You can contact them ahead of time and ask them questions. A lot of times we ask. Can we take a folding foldable wheelchair? Um, you know, or if you have a scooter, you definitely need to know if they can take a scooter at all on an excursion. That would even be more difficult to find. So, um, so that, that's why I really like TripAdvisor. It's, it's sometimes it can save you money, but the thing to remember is if you book through the cruise line and your excursion is late, the ship will wait for you. But if you don't book through the cruise line, the ship will not wait for you. But the tour operators know that. They're familiar with it. They realize you might not have money to get back any other way. So they they do their best to have you back several hours early. Yeah, I was going to say, we've never had a problem. And we, we had a, uh, an early experience. And this was on our first seven-day cruise. And I'll share this experience because it illustrates the value of sometimes of doing it yourself. We were going to Alaska. We were on the Spirit. We were on Norwegian Spirit, NCL, the first sailing in the U.S. because they had brought it back from Star Cruise Lines. Uh, they'd had the, what is now the Pride of America sank and dry dock. And that was the ship we were supposed to be on. So they um, basically fast steamed the uh, Spirit across the Pacific and brought her from Asia. When we got on, a lot of the signage was still in, in Asian characters. Uh, you know, and, and it was funny because there were a lot of people just real upset. We were having a great time, so we were fine with it. But we, we were, lived in Japan, too. So yeah. that well, <laughs> not that we could read the signs, but it just, you know, we, were, we just thought it was, we were having a good time. We weren't, we weren't at work. Or we were on a cruise. It was okay. Yeah, and the menus were there, and they were in English, and the waiters knew all about the food. And then if you can't look at a buffet and tell, you know, I don't know, chicken from mashed potatoes, you're in trouble. So <laughs> we didn't have a problem with it. But the, the interesting that happened was is when we went into Juneau, we were late. And so they canceled the whale watching excursion for the ship for Juneau. We had booked ours independently. And as soon as we got in range, we grabbed our cell phone, called the company, said, don't worry about it. There will be a van with a driver at the end of the, at the, end of the gangplank, basically. And just get off, get in that. Uh, we have one boat out. They've already found some whales. That the boat you'll get on will be a little faster. It'll get right out there. You'll have a chance to do your whale watching excursion. Yeah, it takes them about, it could take them 45 minutes to an hour and a half to find the whales. So the first boat just spent all day doing that. And the second one, we just sped out there and caught up with them and saw the whales. And it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. And, but we were, there was about three couples that had done what we had done. And they were, we all got on the van with us. And everybody else on the ship didn't get to go whale watching. So there are sometimes advantages, like I said, it's financially. Um, there are excursions, like a good example, and I talk a lot about Alaska because we've done more Alaska cruises than anywhere in particular. But in Alaska, we got uh, we rented a car in Skagway and drove into the Yukon Territory, had a great trip, uh, saw some things that were amazing. We saw the world's smallest desert, 
there's a lake out there called Emerald Lake. And when the sun is right, it is just a brilliant emerald green because there's a chemical on the bottom and just the way it works with the light, it uh, it was amazing. Yeah, like on the, the, the um, cruise ships, mostly for a long time, were just selling the train tour up through there, which goes through the bottom of the ravine kind of. But we were, we, we drove up over the pass and then we get to look down onto the train. And that was beautiful. That was really nice. And we saw a lot more scenery. I think now they do sometimes have some um, bus excursions that go there now like that. Yeah. Well, but I don't know that any of those are ship excursions. But anyway, so you have you just have so much more flexibility when you plan it yourself. So, for example, on this cruise that we're on right now, uh, we're going to go to Ocean K. And the only thing that operates on Ocean K, which is the MSC's private island, is the ship's excursions. And that's okay. We're fine with that. We'll do ship's excursions. I have a lighthouse climb planned and a, a snorkeling on a wreck. Um, that's assuming that the, the water is not too too wild. I'm a little worried about my snorkeling excursion. Uh, but in Cozumel, I made arrangements. We're going to go down to a, a beach club. that has, It's an all-inclusive beach club. It's really nice. And it's probably the top-rated uh, hi, Pam. Nice to have you with us today. Uh, I will find my mouse here. Again, the joys of live TV. <laughs> yeah, uh, but nice to have you with us today, Pam. But so, I, like I said, I like to plan my excursions uh, typically independently. As Cheryl said, they know when you have to be back. They're going to make sure you're on the ship. They can't afford to have you miss the ship, but because at that point in time, then uh, what happens is, is they get a bad reputation. <laughs> um, but so, you know, we'll spend some time thinking about trying to decide what we want to do. Um, some days, some cruises, some sh times we'll do pretty much beach days. We're not huge beach people, but we went to Bimini and we did a, we rented a golf cart in Bimini. We were there, uh, what, three weeks ago on carnival and that was a lot of fun we rented the golf cart and drove all over the island uh we found a, a place at the point uh, the very south end of the island where we got to uh you could see the water was crystal clear a lot of people were snorkeling there was a bull shark that was swimming around he it wasn't very big he's probably three or four feet but he was swimming around you know 15 feet off the you know off the end of the of the island so we got to do that we explored beaches that you know people on a ship's tour wouldn't have seen yeah, you know, so like I said, we like to do those kinds of things. That's so, yeah, and then when you look up, you can also just do some. I do some research on the sides of the island. Bimini is only a few miles. It's only like two miles long by I don't know, like a mile wide or something. So, a a, a golf golf cart, you can see the whole island. You know, there are other islands. I wouldn't do that because you just couldn't. I wouldn't want to rent because the well, like driving St. Thomas is a little crazy. So I have rented there, but. <laughs> Prefer not to. Not a golf cart. Yeah, sometimes it's um, sometimes it's easier to see what size island are you really looking at, and then you get an idea of what you might want to try. Um, so you know, and again, so we do our research. You know, and again, that's for me, that's fun. I'll I'll read a lot of reviews. I'll look at pretty much all the tours everybody has and decide what you know what I think is going to be the most interesting. Um, then. You know, that's a, that's a huge piece of, of our planning, trying to make sure we have that worked out. I think the, probably the next thing we'll talk about is, is your transportation to the cruise ship. There are advantages both directions. Now, Cheryl and I, like I said, we'll typically fly in the day before. You know, a, a good example is we have a January cruise going to, uh, we're going to Aruba and, let's see, Aruba, Bonaire, and uh, the Dominican Republic, two ports in the Dominican Republic. For that cruise, we'll fly in a day early, and two couples that are traveling with us are flying in a day early. And so, you know, when they all when we all get here, we'll go find somewhere to go eat or do something, you know, where we have a good time. But like I said, it lets us get on. One of the couples is coming out of Minnesota. You know, they're flying out of Minneapolis. And guess what? Sometimes Minneapolis closes. If you fly the day early, you know, you have a really good chance of being able to make sure you're, you catch the ship. If, if you're on a ship... Um, you know, if, if you're, the cruise line does your air and does your transfer, you know, there is a chance they'll wait for you. If you're doing it on your own, they're not waiting. They're, you know, they're going to sail. 
Uh, the same thing with being back for cruise, you know, from back on the ship. Cheryl and I always plan to be back on the ship an hour before we need to be. Because that hour is just so nice not to have to be running. And we literally, we've seen people running on the piers to get on the ship. And then also, um, something on screen, also the um, the tenders at a tender port, uh, the tenders take a while to get back and they only hold so many people at a time. You can't have all 4,000 people riding that last tender where that holds 60 people at the last minute. So, you know, a lot of times the tender port would like to go early, come back early. No problems and no waiting in the heat that way. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, those are things that you think about as you're planning your trip. You know, what do you want to do? Um, like I said, the, 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 the simplest thing is the, the, the let the cruise line do the air. Your travel agent can help you do that uh, and make the transfers. And then everything's pretty easy because your bags just show up in your cabin. But like I said, we, we like the option of being here. We'll, um, our scheduled time to get on the ship tomorrow, I think, is 1130. We'll probably be at the port at 11, you know, because sometimes they're running a little fast. and uh, Early is usually they're not on. So what that means is, is that when we get on the ship, we'll be able to have lunch on the ship. We'll be able to explore the ship a little bit. Um, you know, and get to start to get to know it. I like my vacation to be as long as possible. Oh, and it used to be a long time ago. They have everybody get there very early and you'd sit in this huge waiting room and you'd all just be waiting, waiting until everything was ready. But now with COVID, um, they don't really want you there a lot earlier. They want it to be, you know, just gradually people coming, going through what they need to do, getting on and get on the ship. And so it's, um, if there's more um, separation now between people and, um, and and you're not waiting there for hours. I really like, I actually like the changes in the COVID game. Yeah, I was saying it's been really pleasant. We've, uh, you know, we have not had any problems. This, we've done three cruises. These two will make five since July. You know, it, it, I want you to realize that what that means is Cheryl and I are working very hard to help our audience. You should appreciate it. <laughs> And then, oh, and then about like if you do come a day early, then you have to remember you're going to need um, either you have to either make reservations early enough to get a hotel that has free transfers to the port or you're going to have to plan, you know, that you're going to buy and get, you know, call Uber that morning or get a taxi. And you can look up, you can actually type like today, for example, I, I Googled how much is taxi fare from Minneapolis, I mean, Miami International Airport. To the Intercontinental Hotel because we're riding in the van, in the in the in the van, the taxi van, and he says, "Oh, I forgot to turn my thing on." We're like, well, how much is it going to be? And he's like, twenty-seven dollars. We're like, we have no idea if that's right or not, but you can actually um, search that. You can just Google that, and then you'll know. Okay, an Uber, and you can do Uber. Uber can you can do estimates on Uber. Say this is the address, this is where I want to go. How much is it going to cost me? So you can plan all of that if you stay in there. Yeah, and, and so and tying in with that, that, that brings up a good time to talk about something that's not on our notes. But I, if you fly with a wheelchair, you know it's pretty easy to get around when you get here. If you fly with, if you bring your own scooter, finding accessible transport in Miami can be a challenge. I would be really, I would make sure that I knew exactly how I was going to get my scooter from the hotel to the airport. In fact, my recommendation to all my clients is, is that you rent the scooter. Because first of all, everybody's seen what happens to airline luggage. That can happen to your scooter or your custom wheelchair. We had uh, a young lady I uh, met online that, you know, travels with challenges. You know, they mangled her, her you know, $1,000 plus custom wheelchair. You know, and she she needed it, and then the airline just mangled it. You know, when she gate checked it. So I, I encourage you to uh, not fly with your scooter; just rent one. I for this eight day cruise coming up, I think it was about two hundred dollars, and they'll deliver it to the port. Now, depending on the ship or the cruise line and the rental company, there's two major ones in the U.S. You've got Scooter Around, and you've got the Special Needs Group, and each of them. Uh, has cruise lines that they can deliver to your cabin on board. And if if you if they can't deliver to your cabin, what they'll do is, is you'll meet them out uh, before you get into the lobby. And so, you know, for this upcoming cruise uh, in January, uh, some of the people that are traveling with us, they'll get what's called white glove service, but they'll get there and they'll get their scooter before they enter the terminal, which 
has its uh, its good side because then you don't have to wait on somebody on the ship to come push you up, which can be a, a delay sometimes. Uh, it makes it easier on the healthy person to get the luggage up that needs to be gone. And this is another thing I'll say is give the porters everything that you don't need. Now, I don't give them my computers. I don't give them my cameras. Not that I'm worried about them taking them. That's not what worries me. But I just want them with me so that when I get on the ship, I've got the, the tools I use. And also carry our medicines. Now, our vitamins, sometimes I'll put in our bags, but our medicine, I, I just carry that in like a carry-on bag. I just hold on to it. Yeah, so there's some things we don't we don't put, but the more that you can give them and the less you have to carry, the easier your life is as you go up and get on the ship. Make sure you have, keep your passport out, too. Yeah, you, you'll need your passport, shower, and those kinds of things. But what happens is is some cruise lines will have a place where you can drop your carry-on, and they'll kind of check it, which is okay. But if not, then wherever you go on the ship, guess what has to go with you? So the more stuff you've got that you're taking with you, the uh, more challenging it becomes to get it around when you when you want to go eat. Yeah, Royal Caribbean is nice. They do have, they usually have like a lounge where they'll have somebody assigned to stay there and watch your extra carry-on bags until you can get to your rooms. And that's really nice. Yeah. Really appreciate that. Um, one of the things that, and, and this goes to now, when you get on the ship, so here's a here's an interesting thing. A lot of people, when they get on the ship, they go to the buffet. And Cheryl and I, the buffet is our absolute last choice usually for where we eat. So there's almost always other places that are open. With NCL, there's always one of the main dining rooms that opens about 12. And that's a great way to start. Uh, your meal with sit down waiter service in the main dining room. You know, usually there's five or six people in there. You know, it's like, you know, it's like you're waited on like your royalty, which is kind of nice. And sometimes they have other, especially restaurants, occasionally will have like a buffet in there. It's not their normal food. So you're not getting a taste of the specialty restaurant food, but they, they like they, the Mexican one, one time they had like um, some other international food set up in a buffet. Which was really nice. Again, just similar to the buffet area, but a more um, intimate setting. Just start to cruise. Yeah, different place on the ship. Um, the other thing is, like on Carnival, when we got on board, they had they have um, like three or four free specialty restaurants, which is kind of an interesting situation because they have a uh, not they had um, Guy Fieri, Guy's Burgers, and they had some amazing hamburgers. Uh, they had the Blue Iguana, which is open. And for lunch, and it is like, um, oh, like a Chipotle. Think of it that way. You can go in and get a custom burrito, and it was really good. And they have a variety of sauces. Uh, I think that that uh, restaurant. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and some people love the buffet. I you know, and I'll eat on the buffet, but like I said, it's it's my usually my last choice. Carnival. If you're on Carnival. They win the prize for the cakes at their buffet. You gotta oh, make, yeah. save room for cake, cake piece. You don't want, you don't want to miss that. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of places will have pizza. So, like, I expect tomorrow, besides the buffet, when we get on the pizza restaurant. Now, MSC doesn't have a lot of uh, free specialty places. Uh, Carnival wins hands down on that because they have they have guys pig and anchor is free. They have the pizza place is free. Guys burgers. guys burgers the blue iguana all of those are free and then their specialty restaurant um they uh oh cucina del capitano which is an italian restaurant they serve some of they have a very limited selection but it's free for lunch so you have all of these options so again that's part of what preparation does for you is you can have an idea of where you want to go when you get on the ship um, um, oh, anyway, the other thing I want to talk about was um, is luggage. There's one thing that's like you think that's the last thing you have to get ready, but sometimes from time to time the airlines might change the size they allow, whatever. It's always good to take a good look at your luggage, make sure it's you know that it's acceptable to the airline, and then um, and then um, oh, it's here's something you can actually ship your luggage. Like if you if you end up with too much stuff, you big buyer you can sometimes ship luggage and you can also like if you're going to come to a hotel early i think you could ship your luggage a day early if you didn't really want to take it on the plane i i, I don't I'm not sure why people do that but i know some people they just don't 
want to deal with their luggage at all at the airport. And that's what they do. So that's a new option. And then um, also your weight. We have a luggage scale. It's just a little, it just hangs, you just hook it around yeah. your, um, just hook it onto the top of your luggage um, handle and pull up and, you know, digitally just tells you how much your, your luggage, it's, it's kind of an estimate, but because I think 50 was the limit, but certain airlines have different weight limits, the different number of bags you can carry, know how much, you know, if you need two bags, I mean, I know we carry a lot of electronic stuff. Then you just need to know how many carry-ons are allowed and if it's going to cost you more so you can be prepared for that. And then, too, like if you have um, – we love the Delta card. We like to fly Delta because we get a lot of free bags. Out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like today we had three, and which was one over the limit. And she asked me if I had a Delta card, and I said, yes, sure, I've got three of them. And she said, okay, you won't have to pay the $40 to ship that extra for that extra bag. Um, the other thing – and this was a su suggestion that I heard somebody talking about and I love – and Cheryl and I do this now, is, is that we put, each of us has, rather than having our own suitcase, we put half of our clothes in one suitcase, half in the other for both of us. And, and the reason for that is, is if they lose one bag, we still have clothes. Yeah. So many times I've seen people on cruises and the third day, they're the same thing. And I think sometimes they'll get, you know, they'll buy something in the shops on the cruise ships, but I mean, I'm an odd size. I'm really tall. I wouldn't find anything to cover my knees, probably, if it was a dress. And um, and I like longer things. And so anyway, if you're like me, you just want to make sure that you, you'll have your own clothes. Well, and yeah, and I was going to say with it, too, the other thing that's important, and that's one of the advantages of having travel insurance, if your baggage gets mislaid, and, and I've had bags that, that went, you know, when I used to fly for work a lot, I've had bags take an entirely different route and get to where I lived at very different times. But what will happen is, is your travel insurance, if you've got good travel insurance, will uh, cover some clothes and stuff on board the ship because you don't, you don't want to be able to brush your teeth and all of those kinds of things. And so they'll, they'll provide some of that for you. So there's a lot of things that, that, that you want to think about. Um, if you don't have any specialty needs as far as your skincare, really the cruise lines and the hotels for the most part have, pretty much everything you need. If you forget your toothpaste, they usually have the tube of toothpaste out. The toothbrushes are not too great. Yeah. Sometimes toothbrushes are, are so soft, they're worthless. So that's one thing you want to make sure. But, um, you know, I know years ago, I used to always try to think, oh, am I going to have my shampoo, my cream rinse, whatever. And now I'm like, you know what? I've traveled a lot now and tried a lot of different brands at the hotels and they're all, and they work just fine for a week. I'm fine. And that saves a lot of packing. Yeah. Um, what else do we have on the list? Well, to rent your scooter if you're going to rent one, but we kind of talked about that. Yeah. I think uh, we're done with our list. Okay. Well, yeah, and we've talked quite a, quite a while, but there, these are just things that we've learned. Some of them we learned the hard way. Some of them we've watched other people learn the hard way. You know, so we wanted to share these kinds of things with you. I, I would encourage you to think about creating a packing list, and we'll, uh, we will eventually have one that we will share with everybody that, that tunes in for the live and then watches on the replay. Some things to think about because, again, you know, depending on, like for this, we normally travel with just two suitcases to handle all the stuff. Uh, this one we brought a third suitcase just because we're going to be gone. Uh, we have, what, 13 days, yeah. 12 days, plus uh, the night in the hotel. So if we're 13 days on the road, that typically means you got to have some more clothes. And Look, also we didn't, because we're not, sometimes if you're staying in a hotel between cruises, like if you have a five-day and then a seven-day, you can get your own laundry done how you want those two days but this time we're getting off walking about a couple hundred feet and getting on the next ship so and i don't really like to the cruise ships can do your laundry but it's usually so far what i've seen is they're commercial hot hot machines that just they almost melt your clothes so we try to limit that although they do a great job of steaming your clothes like if you want them steam pressed that they're very good at yeah, and I would say the, the challenge with uh, taking your own clothes is, is that if something happens, they're not liable, and, you know, uh, we just prefer to do our own. So, in this, like I said, we've just packed some extra clothes for this trip. Um, anyway, we're going to wrap it up for tonight, but what I will say is we're going to be live from the ship. Everything, if the internet works like it's supposed to, we will be live from the ship, the MSC Meraviglia, on our way back to Miami next Friday night. So every Friday we'll be here. We look forward to seeing you. 
And thanks for joining us. Good. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Now, Pam, I know you've taken care of that. And I appreciate the fact that you watch all the videos and, and, and do that. Um, it's kind of an exciting time for my channel because we're getting really close to the thousand subscribers. So that's going to make a, a little bit of difference. YouTube will actually start to pay me, you know, a few pennies a, a month. It's not going to be a lot, but again, it's just a milestone on the way. So we're really, we're really happy about that. Um, we do have a lot of more trips coming up, so we'll be sharing them all with you. We'll see everybody. Good night. Okay.